All right, so in this time period, this is pretty much how it's going to go every time is we're going to, you know, fight one match and then we'll save, fight a match and we'll save. There's not really any exploring or areas to go to while you're in this time period. All right, so now we're going to fight, you know, this insect bastard, as he, uh, Yami Yugi always calls him. Oh, your glasses look so stupid. I hate this character so much. And he's got this bowl cut. And, like, his hair. What color is his hair? Would you say teal? I guess teal. Why did we get a fucking insect from Rex Raptor? That makes no fucking sense. How about a cool-ass dinosaur or a dragon? I would really love another Yamatano dragon scroll. I'm not gonna lie. I, I want another one of those really bad. Oh, look at this. So we have Thousand Dragon first turn. I love the hell out of that. Boom, bitch! Hey, I don't know, well, Mars, whatever, fine. So if we draw a Thunder Monster, we will have, you know, a Twin-Headed Thunder, Thunder Dragon. It's just dragons, that's just all I'm gonna be rock rocking all the time. Uh, I wanna get rid of these two, and then we'll make, I guess, the uh, Gigatech Wolf here. And we'll let Gigatef will fuck this dude up. Oh, he's got the Cocoon of Evolution. I did not expect to see that, but guess what? Thousand Dragon still says fuck you. Now, Cocoon of Evolution, you know, it doesn't actually do much here in Forbidden Memories since, you know, he literally can already have, like, the perfectly ultimate Great Moth and the Great Moth. Like, he could just play them from his hand. He doesn't have to wait for, you know, the Cocoon to do all its business. Uh, I can make another Gigatech Wolf. Man, I want to get rid of all this shit. Yeah, fuck Umi, fuck this, fuck this, and we'll just make another Gigatech Wolf. I just, I want a lot more dragons. Just all dragon pieces so I can quickly create the Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. Like, you know, really, I could get another baby dragon. You know, maybe, like, you know, Red-Eyes Black Dragons I would not be against getting because... Not only could I create the um, Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, but, you know, maybe I'd also be able to make, like, a Meteor B-Dragon if I got some, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, Meteor Dragons as well. Uh, alright, so I guess let's go ahead and make uh, a Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. We can do it like this, alright? So, yeah, now uh, our little... Insect fuckboy here, Insector Haga, is about to be Insector fucking dead right here. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, Gigatech Wolf is Garbaggio, man. And I guess, you know, thinking about it, you know, for the dub, uh, Weevil Underwood, I guess that, that's a pretty good name for Insector Haga. Although they could have called him, like, Insect, uh. I don't know. Weevil Underwood is actually a good name. And Rex Raptor, I think, is a really good dub name. Even something like uh, My Valentine. Like, for a lot of the names, I think they did fine. It's just, I, I think I would have preferred them not change, like, um, Jonochi's name to Joey Wheeler. Just because he's such an important character. But, I mean, you know, thinking about it, like, Jonochi to Joey, that, that's not really that big of a jump. And then, like, they did a similar thing in Dragon Ball, where, um... In Japanese, Krillin's name is Kurin, and they changed him to Krillin. Like, that's pretty much the same thing as changing Jonochi to, Jonochi to Joey. Yeah, guess what? Insects aren't that tough, unless you have the perfectly ultimate Great Moth, who's like the strongest... Well, no, he's not actually the strongest standalone monster, because the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon is in here. Yeah, we're doing well. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to save, duh. What do you think we're going to do, girl? What else can you do besides help us save? Build my deck? Why? Put some shitty monster that this fool just gave me? You know this monster he just gave me sucks dick. All right, so here's my Valentine. This huge tittied girl. Oh, and they cut away the shots of her cleavage. The entire point of this character is fan service. Well, at least until she gets, uh, you know, trapped inside her own mind by Yami Malik. Oh, actually, this is not that bad. Yeah, yeah, we'll put this in. 
Uh, because I could always use beasts. So let's get rid of... Uh, actually, I might not get rid of anything. No, we're I think we're good. Well, I have so many metal monsters. Maybe not quite so many. Let's get rid of the steel scorpion and we'll put in the sleeping lion. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, that that is that is so brutal. When okay, so my uh face is dark malik. Oh, and we get it right in our opening hand. Wow. Oh no, we have the uh flame service. Okay. So let's do you 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 and you and this should give us the um flame service right here unless this creates some ridiculous fusion i don't know about yeah okay all right yeah flame service so this is a this is an a-ok -okay opening hand uh move to do my my is not really going to be like you know tossing out she pro obviously has harpy's pet drag well i don't even actually i don't even know if harpy's pet dragon is in this to be honest Um, we're gonna get rid of all this shit. And, uh, this will probably give us the, uh, Gigatech Wolf. Yeah. All I'm gonna be doing in these duels is just ejecting my... Oh, wow, the Gemini Elf, 1900. That's pretty good. So, had I not got the Flame Cerberus first turn, she might have been able to do a little bit. But we're just gonna constantly be trying to get the Twin Headed Thunder Dragon. So, anyway, like I was trying to explain, Ma, you bitch... She faces... Oh, what is it? Oh, the two seven-colored fish. Okay. I probably will have enough for the twin-headed thunder dragon, though. I do, yeah. So, huh. Guess what? Doesn't fucking matter, bitch. Anyway, so my face is Yami Malik. That's uh, Yami Malik's very first duel, actually. And he beats her, obviously. And then, uh, as the penalty game that he inflicts upon her... He traps her inside her own mind. And in the manga, it's different. In the manga, he puts her inside an hourglass and, like, um, flesh-eating, like, insect beetles. You see these in a lot of different, like, uh, Egyptian lore movies. Uh, these beetles will slowly eat her until she dies. And he, M Malik says it'll probably be about uh, 24 hours until you die. Uh, they change it up in the anime because I guess that's really, really, really dark. And they wanted to back off that a little bit. And in the anime, what he does is he traps her inside her own mind where she's tortured by visions of uh, her deepest fear, which is being alone. So she's forced to watch, you know, everyone else have fun and everyone else is, you know, enjoying friendship. And she's just stuck watching this as, you know, she slowly dies. And then um, the hourglass is pouring, like, sand into it. So she's eventually going to suffocate, I guess, from, you know, her own fear and torment. And even though it's not quite as, you know, just in-your-face brutal as being eaten to death by beetles, it is like the psychological torment is pretty fucked up for, you know, what is essentially a cartoon. Like, that's why some animes are pretty dope. Oh, I'll wish you luck. Whatever. And then, and then Tay is like, Yay, Yuki, I'm so fucking glad you beat that bitch Mai. Fuck her. <laughs> Fuck that bitch Mai. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know you're jealous, girl. Don't, you, you don't have to don't have to tell me. And then, of course, um, Mai, in the arc immediately following the Battle City stuff, you know, after Yami Malik is taken down and all that, it's really awesome the way, like... She's still being affected by that trauma of when she was trapped inside her own mind. And that greatly influences the actions she takes in the uh, Doma, you know, uh, or King of Atlantis. Whatever arc you, that's called. Waking the Dragons, I think it's sometimes called. And then here we have Bandit Keith. <laughs> this you see this a lot in like a uh, Japanese fiction where they'll always have a character who's American and he's so like in your face ridiculously like braggadocious. They always do that in Japan where it's like they think all Americans are just fat, lazy, like you know, really braggadocious, cocky, arrogant motherfuckers. And whenever they'll put a character in there, they always make sure that it's, you know, a Bandit Keith-type character. It's interesting. He's another character. 
thinking about it, the manga, the Yu-Gi-Oh manga is so brutal and violent. This is an, oh wow, we have Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon first turn. See, this is why I got the Thunder Dragon. Um, in the manga, so Bandit Keith, uh, the last match you see him do in the manga is in the Duelist Kingdom arc, he loses to Joey uh, right near the end of the Duelist Kingdom tournament. And after he loses to Joey, he threatens Pegasus. Uh, I guess I'll make a Gigatech. I keep getting a lot of fucking Gigatech Wolf. Here, let me just uh, get rid of all of you. Bam, bam, bam. So, after losing to Joey, uh, Bandit Keith threatens Pegasus. And, ooh, that makes Dice Armadillo nice. And then Pegasus, in the anime... He steps on a switch and ejects Bandit Keith from the uh, castle, and he falls into the ocean where eventually uh, the rare hunter ghoul's boat picks Bandit Keith up, and, you know, Malik takes control of him with the Millennium Rod. And then <clears throat> you see him uh, battle Yugi. Huh, let's see, we don't really have anything. Um, <clears throat> I'll just put uh, the Mooka Mooka down. You see uh, Bandit Keith battle Yugi while being mind-controlled by Malik. And after... Oh, wow. Look at that. All right, well, Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon will take him down. After Yugi beats... Uh, Ban well, the, the duel never really finishes because the building starts burning down or whatever. Anyway, you never see Bandit Keith again after that. In the manga... Wow. Dana Keith is using a lot of not machines, considering he's supposed to be Mr. Machine, man. But we've got a second Twin Head of Thunder Dragon, so fuck you, bitch! In the manga, um, like, the way it happens in the anime is where, like, he finishes his duel with Joey, and then Pegasus is like, oh yeah, by the way, I saw you cheating, fuckboy. Get out of my sight. And he has his servants, like, carry him away, but then Dana Keith breaks free and jumps up to attack Pegasus. In the manga, like, the duel finishes, like, Joey walks away, Bandit Keith leaves the room, and, like, Pegasus leaves the room, too, and then Keith goes and confronts Pegasus, like, in a different place, and Pegasus then reveals, like, oh, yeah, by the way, I saw you cheating, fuckboy, time for you to die for that, and he inflicts a penalty game upon, uh, Bandit Keith, where what Keith does is, um, Pegasus basically turns his finger like you know how you can make like a gun thing with your with your hand kind of like you know yugi and uh yu yu Hakusho does the spear gun well pegasus does that and he makes bandit keith that turns like into a real gun like with his finger and he shoots himself in the head while playing like you know russian roulette with his finger which it wasn't literally turned into a gun but it's got like the same th invisible wire isn't that a really good trap holy shit that's lucky but yeah, so Bandit Keith ends up fucking dead in the manga from that. What? Ay, 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 ay. What? what? <laughs> the card professor. I am possibly by a kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can fuck off the edge of my dick now. Thank you. No shit, I made the motherfucking finals. I'm Yugi. Hello. What do we want to do? Um, Let me first, let me take a look. Did I really just get that awesome trap? Holy shit. Yeah, that's pretty good. But, I mean, from this point on in the game, I guess we're not going to see that many monsters with attack lower than 2,000. But still, like, that's really good. Like, I'm definitely putting that in the deck ASAP. What do we want to get rid of? Uh, we've got a ton of metal monsters and a ton of beasts. I'm going to get rid of, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's get rid of one of the beasts, because some metals I can combine with my dragons to make metal dragons. If it's like a Yamatano uh, dragon scroll or baby dragon. So we'll get rid of a beast. We'll get rid of one of the air marmots, and we'll bring in the invisible wire. Wow, that's, that's fucking badass, man. I'm very... I, I did not expect, like, going through the story duels to get good cards, but hey, I guess there is a chance. Okay, so we're done in here for now. Let's continue on. Now that we're done with the preliminaries, we're going to be moving on to some real opponents, too. Let me tell you, fuckers. 
Yeah, please, Joey, tell us, how are you doing? You you doing okay in this tournament? Oh, he's, he's winning, he's winning. Yeah, so hey, the only people who can beat Joey are uh, Yugi and Malik. And I, I certainly don't see Malik anywhere around. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Exclamation point! No, actually, right now, this is... This is where Yugi gets his solid snake on. Do the little, cut in that little noise. <laughs> oh no, alert status. Duh, what's wrong, Yugi? It's shoddy, yo! Shoddy, you're so cool. There he is. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> I, I guess. Um, <laughs> since so far, like, I've, you know, come to the theory of when this game was released and stuff. Basically, when Shoddy first shows up in the manga, he is pretty much... Villain might be too strong of a word, but he does do, like, some very villainous things. Because he's trying to figure out, um, if Yugi is worthy of owning the Millennium Puzzle. And he basically, you know, turns Anzu slash Taya into a zombie. And he turns uh, this professor that Yugi's grandfather's friends with into a zombie. And sends him to chase after uh, Jonochi there. Alright, and basically what he's telling us now is that... Um, all of the Millennium items have been gathered here at this tournament. Which, this is actually something similar that happens at the Battle City, where Shadi shows up and tells Yugi, like, Hey, guess what? All of the Millennium items are on this blimp right now. Uh, your mission. Well, hmm. Uh, uh, well, what Shadi is actually... His purpose is to protect the Tam. Oh, another guy in the dream. Could it be a Tam? The Pharaoh. Sh <laughs> so the, this this portrait of Shadi, he's just so blank faced. It's, it's really disturbing. Shoddy, you could get a little expression there, Playboy. It's okay. Oh, yeah, Yami Yugi, your doppelganger. Yeah, I, as he says, other me. Yeah, well, in the show, after the Duelist Kingdom arc, they do constantly talk to each other and they could feel each other's, uh, how they're feeling and stuff. Yep, here we go. So he's going to use the Millennium Ank to jump inside of Yugi's mind, heart, whatever you want to call it. Yami Yugi. Well, born from the power of the Millennium Puzzle is not really correct. He's trapped inside the Millennium Puzzle. Alright, so yeah, we get to go meet... A tam, let's do it, Yugi. And Yugi's like, that sounds pimping. All right, now the character we're essentially playing uh, the role of a tam in this game. And remember, a tam is a you know silent protagonist. Close your eyes, yo. It looks like Yugi has really long nails right there. He's got some coke blades going on, so he can, you know, you know, get get that cut open the bag and get that little bit on his nail and oh that's some good shit right there damn yugi i didn't realize <laughs> your story was that dark all right so now we're inside of atayam's soul room and there he is yo the other me so strange yeah well that's not as strange as you think remember piccolo and kami did the same sort of thing where two beings in one. I guess that happens pretty frequently in anime, huh? 
All right, yeah, I don't need words to understand you. Well, duh, that's because uh, we have a silent protagonist going on in this game here. <laughs> what? What interesting dialogue, Atam? Dot, dot, dot. Or <laughs> ellipses, as some people would say. Very fascinating. Well, yeah, because he has to go save his boy, Simon. We can't just let Simon continue to perish in the fucking Millennium Puzzle. Alright, yeah, so how can we help Ateum here? How can we get him back to his, uh, his time period of ancient Egypt and then go save that world? Alright, so... Atayim gives us some blank cards. And then fucks off. <laughs> hey, Atayim, you can't tell us what we're supposed to do with them, huh, pal? No, I guess not. Yeah, we're all good. Oh, so, see, this is interesting. Shoddy could have came in there with us. I guess Shoddy decided he was going to be lazy today and let Yugi do all the work. We only spoke briefly. Well, yeah, he, he wasn't exactly a man of many words there. Okay, yeah, so in this in this game, Atayim has all of his memories. He doesn't lose his memories like he does in the show. Well, of course, Yugi, yo, let's help our boy Atayim out. Shoddy, give us the answers. What the fuck? And the guy, <laughs> Joey, Joey, <laughs> he's cracking me up, man. Wablamo! So, what we've got is six cards. It's pretty clearly what these are supposed to be for, then. We gotta use these to free him. Gotcha. Oh, Shoddy, do you have some info? Let's go. What are these? What? Shoddy, you are worthless. You are a piece of the Pharaoh's soul. You are a piece of Ateum's father, and you don't even have any info for us. Damn you, Shoddy. The Millennium Items. Oh, no shit. I don't get it. Well, maybe it's six blank cards because Yugi has the seventh millennium item, the puzzle. Alright, well, it's time for the Tournamental Finals. Oh, shit. Oh, that music. Uh. Oh, and Shoddy is our first opponent. Okay. All right, we got to... Oh, John, a battle by our Millennium Items. Oh, shit. We're destined to duel in a Yamino game. Although this... You know, obviously, we aren't actually dueling in a dark game here. Whatever, though. We're just going to destroy him with the uh, twin-headed Thunder Dragon. No biggie. Uh, and we don't have the Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon first turn, which is a shame. So we'll go ahead and make the Flame Cerberus. Uh, and I'm gonna get rid of Yumi as well. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let me put you, 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 bam. There we go. Uh, so this will give us the Flame Cerberus. I'm just gonna get rid of Umi, because we're not gonna need Umi's power-up effect against Shoddy. Shoddy's not very good, um... The rest of the opponents we're going to be facing from this point on actually do get quite a bit stronger. I guess we'll... Let me put down uh, these fuckers and then we'll end with the Parrot Dragon. Yeah, bye. Boy, bye. I don't need any of you guys. Later, later, later. All right, Flame Cerberus. Let's see what he's got. We'll use Flame Cerberus. Okay, wow. Yeah, meta bet. I, was, I did that just in case he might have had like a Mystic Elf or something, but... I'm dumb. Sh Shoddy is terrible. This this duel is probably going to end on the next turn, because that right there is probably like a, a 500 defense monster. But we don't fucking have... 
Oh, man. All right, well, we'll make Stone Dragon. I really wanted my uh, twin-headed thunder dominating death lightning dragon of Ramu Thor capabilities, but unfortunately we didn't get it. That parrot dragon. I was wondering, like, the next time I build up star chips, I was trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to buy. Because you can't really, like, again, I showed you guys, like, blue eyes, white dragon, you're not getting... A lot of good cards like that you just have no chance of getting. But one I could get is um, some power-up items. I'll probably save up. I know a lot of the good power-up cards take about um, 800 star chips, I believe. And I'll probably get like a Bright Castle. Now what the Bright Castle does in this game is any monster, it increases its attack by 500. Which is obviously very, very good. Uh, Magira Slate. Garbage! Yeah, I don't expect to get, like, good cards. Yeah, oh, well, you lost. Bye, boy. And, yes, Shoddy. Oh, interesting that the Millennium Scales... Oh, this is fascinating. That's different from how the Millennium Scales look in the show. But I guess, really thinking about it, the first time the Millennium Scales are shown in the show... If I'm correct, it's not until the very, very end. Shoddy does have possession of both the scales and the key, though. Um, but the scales... He has the scales, but he never he only ever uses it once in the manga where he kills a guy because you could weigh someone's sins against a feather of... Ooh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Like a tait or something like that. And if your sins are really bad, then you get eaten by this demon... It's actually a pretty grotesque uh, death, but... Yeah, so anyway, Shadi's got these two Millennium items. He's the only one that has two. Well, until Yugi gets all of them. Oh my golly geez, they go into the cards. How's about that shit? Yeah, so now, as we beat each person that has a Millennium item, we'll get their item into the card, and then hopefully we'll be able to get Atayim back to Ancient Egypt. That's some ballin' ass shit. Oh, there's my girl. There's my girl. Hey, listen, listen. Um, Anzu, hey, can you uh help me relieve some pressure real quick before this next match? Because uh, it's about to get real tough. 